Hey traders, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about Sphere 3D, ticker symbol ANI. This is another one of those stocks that has recently gotten a lot of attention from the FinTwit community and the overall online stock community. And for very good reason, okay, with the closing of the merger with Gripon, they are going to become one of the biggest Bitcoin miners in the world, doing so in an environmentally sustainable way, which is just an additional bonus. But, you know, right now we're sitting in a situation where this stock is extremely undervalued. We have a lot of data out there of just, you know, what their capabilities are going to be. And as a result, you know, I decided to dive in, do some of the math. And what I'm seeing is a major, major upside here. So in this video, I'm going to break down that math for you guys. I'm going to show you guys where I believe fair value is. After that, as always, we're going to hop into the charts, taking a look at key levels, key indicators, and more, so we best know how to play the stock moving forward. And finally, we're going to go over short squeeze and gamma squeeze potential here because I believe that both are present for the stock. But without any further ado, leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel um, if you haven't already, and let's get started. Okay, so really quickly to get started, we're just going to go over this very helpful Yahoo Finance article that came out just a week ago that is going to kind of break down the main data that we can use to build our price target model. As you guys can see here, they are talking about how there was a $85 million payment made uh, towards purchasing 60,000 state-of-the-art Bitcoin mining rigs. Um, this is now going to you know, add to what they've already acquired uh, with the closing of the merger with Gripon Digital Mining. Um, and that will allow them, um, once, you know, everything is completed, to produce an excess of 1,300 Bitcoin per month. And, you know, just furthering along with this, uh, the CEO of the company did say that they have raised um, an excess of US $200 million through um, some financing and offerings that they've done through their stock. And as a result, you know, they now have 67,200 total state of the art machines and also some cash still on hand. So, you know, this is obviously very, very promising. That's obviously a lot of Bitcoin that just pops out on the screen. But now let's break down the math here. And I'm going to show you guys just how big this, uh, this company can be and just how much Bitcoin they can produce and how that ultimately is going to affect what the stock price should be for this company. So first, just some background info, um, just some background numbers. The shares outstanding currently for this stock is 58.8 million. As of 235 Central, the share price was trading at 652, making the market cap, uh, multiplying the shares outstanding by the share price, $383 million. Top of that, we just went over this. They did raise $200 million or even slightly more than that earlier this month. 85 million of which already spent on miners remains cash heavy with about or at least 115 million dollars still left in the bank. Um, some other background stuff to go over. We know that they can produce about 1300 Bitcoin uh, per month with their current infrastructure, which includes 67,200 machines. And that means each machine can mine. And we're just going to divide the 1300 Bitcoin per month divided by the amount of machines. And what we come out with is each machine can mine about 0 0.02 Bitcoin per month. And now let's figure out the price of each machine because, okay, so we... And now let's figure out the price of each machine. So we have 60,000 machines that were purchased for $85 million raised through the offerings. And that means each machine is being priced at $85 million divided by 60,000, which leads us to 14, 16.67 per machine. So right about $1,400 per machine. So we needed to calculate this information because now we know that, you know, they still have $115 million cash in hand. Now, obviously, they can't spend all of that on more Bitcoin mining uh, rigs, but we do know that they are currently interested in spending a good amount of that on their Bitcoin uh, mining machines and that they are probably likely to spend some more cash in the future to grow their infrastructure. Now, we don't know really how much, but you know the way I'm going to calculate this PT moving forward, you're, as you're going to see, is um, we're going to kind of just take some educated guesses. Okay. We know it won't be a hundred percent, but we're going to calculate 
the PT uh, based off of if they spend 0% additional capital to increase their machines, 25% additional capital, 50% additional capital, and 75% additional capital. So the first thing we're going to do now is calculate how many additional mining machines can be purchased through that $115 million in cash they have remaining based off of the percentage of capital allocated. So this is what we get, okay? 25% capital allocated. Um, we see that, you know, we're gonna multiply the $115 million in cash by 0.25. So we take 25% of that and then divide that by the price we calculated per machine. And that's gonna show us that we're about to get 20,294 uh, new machines to mine Bitcoins with. If we do 50%, it's the same exact math, except for instead of by multiplying by 0.25, you multiply by 0.5 we get 40,000 machines. And then if we take 75% of the cash they have on hand and spend that towards new machines, we're going to do the same math, but multiply by 0.75. And we're going to get about 60,000 additional machines to mine Bitcoin with. And we can see that, you know, that is very close to the current number that they already have. So it pretty much double their infrastructure if they spent 75% of that cash on hand. Um, and now in terms of you know the productivity of those additional machines, we can calculate that as well. So if they only spend 25% of their capital, we're gonna take that you know additional machine uh, number that we just calculated up here, multiply that by the rate of Bitcoins per month mine that we calculated right here. And then ultimately we can see how many additional Bitcoin per month that Sphere 3D ticker symbol Annie is going to be able to generate. So if they do spend 25% of their capital on increasing their machine infrastructure, we're going to get 406 additional Bitcoin per month. Uh, at 50%, we're going to get 812 additional Bitcoin per month. And at 75%, we're going to get 1,218 additional Bitcoin per month. Once again, nearly doubling their Bitcoin mining uh, output. So that's obviously very, very promising if they continue to invest in building up their machine infrastructure. Um, and now the next part we're going to do is we're going to calculate how many total Bitcoins could be mined by uh, any on a year, depending on you know the capital they spend on increasing the amount of their machines. So at 0%, if they just stick with their current infrastructure, they don't buy any new machines. We see that they mine 1,300 Bitcoin per month. We're going to multiply that by the 12 months in the year. So we're going to get 15,600 Bitcoin mined per year. Okay, 25%, it's going to be the same thing. Um, with the baseline, but then remember we have 406 additional Bitcoin per month multiplied by the 12 months in the year. And that's going to lead us to 20,472 Bitcoin mined per year. Um, after that, we got, you know, the 50% same calculation. We get up to 25,000 Bitcoin per year. And at 75%, we get up to 30,000 Bitcoin per year. The math is laid out there. You can double check it if you would like. But you know, now we can use that and we can build ourselves a fair value market cap, depending on you know not only what percent of uh, additional capital they allocate towards increasing their machine infrastructure, but also accounting for the value of Bitcoin. Because obviously, depending on what Bitcoin is priced at, that's going to affect you know what the market cap of any should be, given that their you know purpose here with uh, their mining project is to produce Bitcoin. So the more valuable Bitcoin is, the more valuable uh, ticker symbol Annie is going to be. So here we go. We're going to break it down into different chunks. First of all, different prices for Bitcoin. I'm going to use 25,000, 50,000, 75,000, and 100,000. I truly believe that Bitcoin is going to be somewhere in that range over the next year. I'm not huge into crypto, so don't yell at me if I'm wrong about that. But I mean, ultimately, I think you know those are pretty good estimates to use and kind of build our PT off of. But at $25,000, if they do spend 0% on increasing their machine infrastructure, ultimately we see that uh, the company, uh, ticker symbol Annie, is going to be worth 15,600 Bitcoin per year. That is what they produce, multiplied by $25,000 per Bitcoin. And that's going to give us a market cap of 390 million, which, you know, as we calculated earlier, the current market cap is 383 million. So even if they don't increase, you know, any of their current infrastructure and Bitcoin falls all the way back down to $25,000, this company is still undervalued at the moment. Um, at 25%, we're now going to take uh, that uh, 20,472 Bitcoin per year number that we calculated, multiply it by 25,000. 
and we're going to get a now fair value market cap of 511.8 million. We're going to do the same calculations for 50% and 75%. We see that, you know, if Bitcoin comes crashing down this year, it goes down to 25,000, you know, at a minimum, this company is worth 390 million. But if they do spend a good amount of cash on building their infrastructure, they could be worth as much as 755.4 million. Now, if Bitcoin is at $50,000, which I believe is where, you know, it's currently very close to trading at. Here is where fair value market cap lies for the company. So same calculation, you know, same numbers that we used here as far as the Bitcoins per year mined. But now instead of multiplying it by $25,000 per Bitcoin, we're going to multiply it by $50,000 per Bitcoin. That's going to lead us to a minimum market cap of $780 million if Bitcoin's at $50,000 and a maximum market cap of 1.51 billion. Once again, if they decide to allocate 75% of the cash on hand towards building their infrastructure. Same calculation, once again, if Bitcoin increases all the way to $75,000, you're gonna see that then the minimum fair value market cap is going to be $1.17 billion with a maximum market cap of $2.27 billion. And then finally, Bitcoin at $100,000, let's say, that it just continues to remain as hot as it has been over the past couple of years. It continues to increase. Well, then what we see here is major, major potential. Even if they don't increase their machine infrastructure, we can still expect the fair value market cap to be 1.56 billion, almost you know four times the level that it's at right now, or um, you know all the way up to 3.02 billion if they do decide to max out on increasing their infrastructure. So. You know, this is all the math. It's all broken down right here. You guys can once again, fact check it if you like. But, you know, this is kind of the range that we're at, you know, being very, very, very conservative, you know, assuming Bitcoin's going to crash, assuming that they're not going to do any investments. We can see that we are currently trading near that fair value. And then if you want to be super, super aggressive with your PTs and your calculations, well, then you can assume that Bitcoin is going to go up to $100,000. You can assume that they are going to max out on increasing their infrastructure. And all of a sudden, we're left with a $3 billion company. So, you know, that is kind of the basis there for calculating the market cap. And once we have the market cap calculated, uh, it becomes very easy to calculate what the fair value share price can be. All you have to do is calculate, uh, take the fair value market cap that we calculated. So, for example, Bitcoin at $25,000, 0% increase in uh machines. Well, as you guys can see, we calculated a fair value market cap of 390 million. We're going to divide that by the current market cap, which is 383 million, and then multiply it by the share price. And what we're going to see is that the fair value per share is going to be $6.63. That's a 1.8% increase. And I ended up doing the math for all the different scenarios we calculated, ultimately meaning that the highest scenario I calculated when Bitcoin is at $100,000 and 75% uh, of the additional cash that Sphere 3D has on hand is spent towards uh, kind of adding more machines into their arsenal, we can see that fair value becomes $51.43 per share, a 688.8% increase. And then I also highlighted these ones in green. These are kind of our middle targets that I kind of I'm using to say, you know, this is most likely what's going to happen. It falls right in the middle. So the lowest of those is going to be if Bitcoin's at $50,000 and we have 25% spending of the current cash on hand towards adding to their machine infrastructure. If that's the case, then fair value for any stock is $17.47. That's 168% increase over current levels. And then as you guys can see, a little bit more aggressive, but still reasonable price if Bitcoin goes up to $75,000. And we see that Annie spends 50% of their current cash on hand on increasing their machine infrastructure. We could be realizing gains of uh, 396% or a share price of $32.90. So very, very exciting there. It seems like, you know, no matter what fair value price for the stock deserves to be higher and it can potentially go a lot higher be you know a multi-bagger for a lot of us here who got in early so that's kind of where i feel like a lot of the excitement is resonating but now that the math has actually been done and drawn out for you guys hopefully you know you will have confidence that this is indeed a great play for the future um so that's pretty much all i have there for the pt calculation if you have any questions you know you guys can hit me up on twitter or comment below on the YouTube channel and ask those questions. I'll try to answer as many as I can. 
But that being said, let's hop right into this chart, okay? As you guys can see, this stock has had quite an eventful last month or so. Um, you know, we saw this initial squeeze here all the way to highs of almost $12. After that, we saw some offerings and whatnot. The stock price got dropped down. Um, and we've been kind of hovering here ever since. Um, just kind of, you know, waiting for that next breakout, you know, for those of us who know that fair value is much higher, it's actually been pretty nice to see, you know, kind of this consistency here that we're respecting key supports, respecting key resistance levels. And we've just been consolidating and adding kind of more and more buyers and eyes onto the stock. In the meantime, um, going a little more shorter term, you know, explaining the spike today, I, as I'm sure most of you guys know, there was that Seeking Alpha article that was released uh, talking about how Elon could potentially join the board of directors for Sphere 3D. Um, ultimately, I'm not really going to comment on that. I don't know if it's true or not. All I can say is that, you know, it's Seeking Alpha. Anybody can really publish a blog on that. You know, there's not really any fact checking or any promising evidence behind it. If there is more stuff that comes out surrounding that rumor, then yeah, I'm going to go over that and what that could potentially mean. But for right now, you know, that's just ultimately just, you know, a little bit of a hype pump and dump sort of situation that I don't really want to get into um, until, you know, yeah, it's substantiated with more facts. Um, instead, let's just look into the chart and the key levels and indicators. So starting with the VWAP, that's this yellow line here. As you guys can see, we closed right at the VWAP. We can check where we're trading at right now. In after hours, it looks like, you know, the momentum is still there up to 691. So, you know, above the VWAP in after hours, that's definitely a good sign. Um, it means that the bulls are in control of tomorrow's trading session, that the bullish momentum is definitely still there. Uh, now let's hop into our moving averages. So with today's big move to the upside, we were able to easily clear above our two shorter term moving averages. Okay, we have the nine day EMA at 620 and the 21 day EMA at 603. And by closing well above those levels, it shows that this stock is currently very bullish in the short term. But looking a little bit more long term, the stock is even more bullish because our longer term moving averages are all the way down here with the 50 day moving average at 487 and the 200 day moving average at 289. So intermediate to long term, this stock has an incredibly bullish outlook. Final uh, indicator I want to get into today is going to be the RSI. As you guys can see here, this is exactly why I'm saying that I love to see the consolidation that we've been having here you know, over the last few weeks, it has really settled down this uh, RSI right here because we were getting very overextended before that. But now we've come back down to a neutral level. Obviously, today's spike uh, has sent that a little bit back into the overbought zone, but nothing crazy. And as you guys can see, the last few times that the RSI has been at this neutral level, um, we've seen pretty big moves to the upside. So that's definitely a promising uh, indicator right there. And right now, it definitely looks very healthy to continue its bullish run to the upside. Um, so that is a positive. And finally, let's take a look at our key levels heading into tomorrow, starting on the support side. So we're going to have support at 662, 650. I would not be surprised if, uh, you know, the bullish momentum dies, just given the fact that, you know, the main reason that it's up here today was based off of that Elon rumor. So I wouldn't be surprised if it does, you know, have a little bit of a sell off tomorrow and breaks through these support levels and goes to test the 630 support. Um, below that, we do have still very strong support at six dollars all the way down to uh, 575 with uh, um, some more support right here at 585. When it comes to support levels, I always say this, if you are looking to add to your position or buy a position, you should always try to target these support levels. By doing so, you're going to minimize your risk and maximize your upside. It's something I've been preaching about this stock for the last couple of weeks as it has been you know, touching this $6 to 575 level. I've been saying that you know, it's a great spot to add because you know that if it does break below those levels, well, you can just cut your positions and wait for a new bottom to form. But if it does hold up, well, you see how much upside we have here for the stock. So this is definitely a great load zone, but you know, anywhere near support is always going to be a great spot to add to your position. On top of that, we're going to take a look at our resistance levels tomorrow. So 690 really didn't do much today. You know, we kind of just broke way past that, but 
That being said, it has in the past been a pretty good resistance level. Um, after that, we have 715. And above that, we have room all the way to 744. That's kind of where you know we topped out today. Above that, we have 763 and 786. And above 786, things are going to get very, very fun for this stock. We will officially have broken out of that wedge pattern that we're currently consolidating in. And we could see another quick move into the double digits, which is where this stock belongs. Okay, final thing to do when taking a look at the technicals is going to take be taking a look at the volume. As you guys can see here today, big volume day off of the Elon news. Um, and that's really what caused such a volatile move to the upside. We're going to want to see, you know, this increased volume continue, just like we saw, you know, a couple of weeks ago, too. If we want to continue our run, you know, that is kind of the best indicator of what's going to happen next for a stock is the volume. You know, if volume continues to remain high, well, that's a good sign that, you know, interest is still there. Momentum is still there and there is a lot more room to run. Meanwhile, if volume dies off, well, then that shows that, you know, we're probably in for a consolidation period or maybe even some potential downside. So that's all I have to say about that. Now let's hop into short squeeze and gamma squeeze potential, since that tends to be a very hot topic for this stock. Okay, so really quickly, not much to get into, but starting on the short uh, squeeze potential, we do see that a short float of 36.16% is currently present. It is a heavily shorted stock. And as a result, if we do see a quick move to the upside, um, shorts are screwed, okay? And you know when there's this high of a short percentage, we're going to see a lot of shorts scrambling to cover, and that could lead to an even higher move to the upside. So short uh, float, very, very high right now. Normally when it is you know above that 20% level, you're already in short squeeze range, and now it's almost at 40%. So that is extremely promising. And then on the side of the gamma squeeze, as you guys can see here, we have a ton of out-of-the-money options currently purchased all the way down to this $7 level where there's uh, 14,000 options currently open. But we see that, you know, even more out of the money, we have, you know, these $10 strikes for October 15th. We have almost 20,000 contracts opened. And at $15, we have 13,000 contracts opened as well. Meaning that if we were to get up to those levels, you know, the uh, market makers and institutions that are loaning out these contracts are going to be forced to hedge their position by buying shares of the stock, by going long on the stock. And that in turn is going to cause the gamma squeeze, which is going to cause the price to increase even further. So, you know, seeing that high volume on very out of the money options is definitely a great sign that the gamma squeeze potential is there. Um, but aside from that, let me know what you think happens next for this stock. I'm always interested to hear your guys' feedback. If you have any questions for me, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. If you like this video, hit me with a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. And aside from that, have a great rest of your night.